Hello. Welcome back to Cunningham Manor. My name is Daniel, sometimes known as the artist Cunningham Manor. If you haven't heard my music, check it out in the Blasi Blas. But let's get right into it. Recording drums with four microphones in the style of John Bonham. This is a modified version of the Glenn Johns recording technique. Um, and another example of it is right up here in this video where I do a uh, Beatles meet John Bonham fake recording, but it sounds uh, quite close to those recordings, so check that out. Uh, let's get right into it. If you want to sound like Bonham, you should probably use this technique. Here we are in the barn. Obviously, you'll want to prep your drums first uh, by making sure your kit is tuned up just the way you like. You want to address any unwanted ringing. I have these uh, kind of dampeners on the drums to keep them short. As for the recording gear, I'm using the original Apollo Quad and I'm using the Neve 88RS uh, for the preamps uh, through the Apollo. Of course, you can use uh, whatever you like. For the three mics, I'm using the Rode NT1 the Advanced Audio CM47 FET, and the Warm Audio 47 FET. For the first microphone, the Rode NT1, uh, you want to place it pretty close to your head, over your right shoulder, and uh, face down towards the kick drum. As you can see, I'm listening to the results in real time, and I'm moving the mic to find the spot. With the most balance between the kick and the snare, I'm maybe allowing a little bit more volume on the snare because the kick will be compensated a bit later, but I do want the bottom end of the kick to come through the mic. Essentially, you're trying to mix the final sound using mic placement. Once the spot sounds great as a representation of the kick and snare, uh, then we can apply some EQ to um, enhance the elements we want most. Now on to the second microphone. Uh, we're going to shut off the first mic and uh, so we can just hear this one. We want, want to find another complementary angle which gives us a good picture of the kick and snare and uh, retains a similar distance. And then we EQ Again, once we're happy with the sound. Let's bring back the first mic, and, uh, and there we go. We're giving it the classic uh, Glenn Johns, about 45 degree pan. Um, so it's a stereo sound, but it's not super wide stereo. It's, but it gives some nice depth. Let's go ahead and add a compressor. I'm gonna go with the Blue Stripe 1176. Um, we're going with uh, the slowest attack possible to let the transients through and then we're going to give it a really uh, fast release. So we get the original hit for the most part 
and then we kind of get a beefed up body uh, behind it, which is really cool. And uh, we apply this to the other tracks, and um, now that we listen back, we can hear that um, the snare sounds much more controlled, and we're getting this kind of uh, distortion. All right, now we have a beautiful and huge sounding stereo uh, drum sound. Uh, and it actually sounds pretty complete. I mean, you could technically use this uh, for some kind, of, some kind of music uh, for sure. And you could, you know, modify it in the mix process, uh, bring out more bottom and all that stuff. But we're going to go ahead and move on to the third mic. And uh, that's the Warm Audio 47 FET. And it's really to add balance back to the kick, maybe get a little more uh, beater sound, but definitely uh, the bottom end and low mids. For this, we're going to try to keep uh, the distance not too close to the drums, just like the other mics, uh, which will help with the phase. Uh, additionally, uh, once once this is in place, we're going to EQ this, we're going to add some bottom, again, roll off uh, the bottoms to make sure we don't have too much 40 hertz down there, and then uh, accentuate what we want from it, and bring it into the balance. Also, we're going to gate it just a bit because the drum itself is very resonant. It, it, it holds that note for a bit, and I do want a shorter. I find maybe on the if I deal, deal with that in the front end, it makes life a little bit easier later. Although you could do this in the mix process as well. Uh, but it sounds really nice to uh, to blend that in, and now that kick note isn't hanging around forever. Uh, it's kind of a short kick, which is very nice, but it gives us that uh, low end. And uh, brings it back into balance with the volume of the snare. And uh, But the, the kit sounds pretty great. So now, just in case, we're going to add the a fourth mic, which is optional because it already sounds pretty great. The snare sounds pretty great. Um, we've added bottom end, so it is picking that up in the mics. Uh, but in case you need more flexibility later, uh, just to maybe bring out a bit more bottom or concentrate on that snare, we're going to throw that in there and pretty much use the same EQ we've been using. We've, we've very specific frequencies are all kind of sharing and there we have it that's a beautiful uh, sounding drum recording and uh, I think it's a very classic sound obviously to me it sounds like a very dominant natural sounding drum recording um, each element sounds great it sounds natural um, and I love this for kind of a rock sound it's not too close to the drum, and I think what's important here, here uh, you know, everyone talks about 
John Bonham sound, and I think for me, this solves it because you're actually using the techniques that were used to record some of the albums. It's definitely the first Zeppelin one um, that I know of because when John's talking about how he did that, I think a lot of people struggle trying to apply modern techniques and uh, they don't get the Bonham sound, and it's because their mics are you're close micing things, maybe you have a room mic. That's not how they were recorded um, for the most part. And then this is all, you know, pre-mixing. So this is, um, this is just EQ and preamps. You can do a lot to it in the mix stage to make it uh, even bigger. And uh, yeah, I love it.